Blog Talk Radio. Hey, uh, I think I think we have a guest waiting for us. Oh, wonderful! All right, let me see if this is Mr. Chapman. Uh, Mr. Chapman, is that you? I don't know. I'm looking for Unituber. <laughs> I'm here, Bob. How are you this evening? <laughs> Fine, thank you. Right, I agree everybody. with your commentary. Uh, of course, uh, please welcome Mr. International Forecaster himself, Mr. Bob Chapman, making his regular monthly appearance to the show. And uh, thank you so much, Mr. Chapman, for joining us. So, uh, I know it's been like two years now that uh, you've been coming on here once a month with us. It's been longer than that, I think. Uh, well, June of 2009, but uh, who's counting? <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Anyway, I know you're here for YouTuber, so uh, you know I'll let you get the first question in. Well, he was just saying about what we were talking about that he agrees. Um, have you heard that story at all, or? Um, right, I did, and that's that? the first thing I said to my wife. I said uh, he's going all out. This is it. And another indication is, if you look at each issue that I send out, uh, I have about probably eight or ten appearances somewhere. And, of course, they're usually uh, links which have videos or uh, other kinds of tapes. And uh, uh, that's a terrific amount of campaigning. I mean, he's campaigning. And then when he said this uh, today, uh, this is it. He's He's going all the way. He's uh, laid the groundwork with 24 years in Congress, and and um, he's ready to go all out for the American people. And uh, the Republicans don't want to nominate him. He'll run it as an independent mm-hmm. uh, because it, this is it. If we can't do it this time. It's in the streets. So has, has he yeah. said he's going with the GOP or independent? Well, well, I think uh, he'll right try to get the GOP the nomination. Get the nomination. Uh, otherwise, uh, well, uh, otherwise he'll switch over, and they know right. that, which means that the Republican candidate cannot possibly win. So they get a choice: they either allow him to win the presidency, or the Republicans lose. Now, whether they care about that, I don't know. Remains to be seen. Mm-hmm. Um, they control all candidates except him. I mean, even after the uh, election of the presidency, I talked to Ronald Reagan, and I said, you know, all all these people who you have appointed are the enemy. And he says, I know. He said, but that was the price we had to pay to get the presidency. And uh, people think he was a a very good president, Um, Frankly, I don't, and uh, I thought he would do much better, and I also thought that he would have been really more conservative. He did a lot of things I didn't like, and um, but anyway, uh, they know that Ron Paul's not going to do that. Um, how this is all going to work out, I don't know, but Ron Paul, in deciding to run for the presidency uh, is an extreme danger because there's a good chance they'll try to kill him. Yeah, I, and I he knows that. When, I, I'm remembering when he ran last year, uh, or last election anyway, um, at the very beginning before he dropped out of the race, um, there was an Internet website that monitored the traffic um, to see who's searching for what and who's looking up information on which candidate and stuff. And his search ratings were off the charts, and the media was continuously downplaying and downplaying this thing, and and the guy didn't get as much recognition as he deserved because the mainstream media news um, uh, that you see on the TV and stuff, that they didn't even give him a minute worth of time, you know, compared to everyone mm-hmm. else in the race, and if they had given him even... I, I, you know, 25% of the coverage that he deserved, considering the internet traffic going to his searches and his donations, um, he, he easily would have won the election. 
But obviously they had a different plan in mind with Obama and stuff. But um, he he dropped out quite early in the race, if I recall, last last uh, campaign. So uh, if he's actually standing down from his position in Congress now and going full tilt uh, on the campaign trail for the election bid this year, I don't I don't um, think he's. I think uh, he's got a Dropping out at the moment, I think he's going to. Right. I didn't get that impression from what I read. Okay. Yeah, I didn't. I don't remember him saying yeah, when he, what was. I read, he was. He might uh, try to stay through. Oh, finish the votes. Okay. He might stay stay in uh, through some special votes over uh, the next six months. Hmm. Well, we'll okay. see. You know, it's all uh, guesswork. But uh, to him, the die is cast. Yeah, to me, um, he didn't do this last time, or, or the first time from what I recall. You know, obviously he's been in, in session now for 24 years in his term, uh, or in his seat, rather. And I know that um, him taking this move to um, step down at, at the end of his term, like you said, in six months or so, whenever it ends, um, to me, that that signifies that he is going to really put everything into running for, for this um, for this term or this election, rather. He is really going to, and, and he didn't even put everything into it last time. He stepped down, I think, way before his time. And he, uh, I, I think, if he if he had stayed on um, with everything he well, it had, wasn't really he that he stepped won. down. It's that McCain already got the number of uh, uh, electorates. Uh, to uh, to win the uh, the Republican nomination, and he chose not to run as a third party. Hmm. Oh, well, I think he probably would have gotten more votes over McCain if he did, or it would have been pretty darn close. Um, he was really, really popular, um, and that was that was three years ago. You know, that was 2007 and eight that he was doing this, and I think um, him devoting all of his resources toward this. Uh, election this time around, um, we're going to see some very different results. <clears throat> well, a lot more people know him, and his stature is far greater than what it was a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and what he stands on is, is much more in the forefront now, and a lot of people see that, and they, they weren't allowed to see that before. Right, but let me ask you here, Bob, are, are, is the GOP going to have no choice but to give Ron Paul some kind of press? Because otherwise he can, they know he can jump out and, and beat them badly as an independent. Well, uh, that's right. I don't think it uh, would uh, affect uh, those running for Congress or the Senate too much. But uh, uh, if they don't nominate him and he's got the strength there's no possible way a Republican candidate no matter who it was can win mm -hmm. and he's going to draw Democrats um, he's going to draw a lot of black people who are mm -hmm. very disturbed with uh, the current president and uh uh, because he's from Texas, he is liable to draw many more Americans of of Latin, Mexican descent. And I think that uh, uh, it, it won't be giant, but uh, he could pick up 6% uh, there net. And uh, that would be very helpful. Uh, he, he's very well-liked among everybody uh, mm -hmm. the question is what's going to transfer uh, transpire between now and election and i mean if you look at the uh, financial situation in the united states and in europe it's dreadful and it, it cannot get better it's going to get worse and so and and that is at least over the next one year period which take us up five or six months prior to the election and maybe longer, right into the election. I mean, what's going on is unprecedented. Right. Well, let me get your opinion here, Bob, of uh, 
Italy is, is collapsing, and they're saying that Italy is too big to prop up, unlike Greece. Well, it's this concept of too big to fail. Uh, if they prop up Italy, they're going to have to prop up Spain. And if they have to prop up the rest of them, uh, even though they're smaller, it and I projected this a year and a quarter ago on radio and TV and the newspapers in, in Greece. And I said that uh, it will cost about $4 trillion to, quote, bail them out, the six of them. And nobody agreed. At that time, Germany said a trillion dollars would do it. And I upped my figure about a month ago to four to six trillion. And there's a lot of things we don't know because they lie about everything. Mm -hmm. And um, Germany yesterday jacked up their estimate close to my original of 3.5 trillion. So I was way, way ahead of them and the game. And Germany, I should say the German people, they don't want the euro. They don't want to be in the EU. They never wanted to, and they're sick and tired of being the scapegoat. And so with that said, uh, I think the whole thing's going to come unglued. And I believe that the Illuminists in New York and London, I believe that they think that the euro and the European Union have been terribly unsuccessful. And they don't want the dollar to lose its status as world reserve currency. So I think a lot of what you see going on, like the downgrading of the um, different countries' debt, they downgraded Ireland to junk today. Now, Everybody knows it was junk three years ago. With Italy and Greece, people like me, who are professionals, knew they were broke 11 years ago and how they were avoiding it. And everybody in the rest of the Eurozone and the European Union looked the other way because they wanted this grand design for the beginning of the formation of one world government and the one world currency which they expected the euro would be. And the Illuminous City of the United States, I believe, say, no, we're not going to do that. And part of uh, Dominique Strauss-Kahn being taken down was that he wanted to use the SDR. And, of course, the biggies in New York, they don't want that. They want, under any circumstances, to continue, the, the dollar, continue to have the dollar as it were a reserve currency. And so I think, and I can't prove this, but it's my back-in feeling, I think that the, the, the Illuminists in the U.S. and London are deliberately trying to destroy the euro. I hmm. can see that. Yeah, I would agree. And, you know, no one else has come out with that. And I'm usually first in the scene, and I'm usually right. And I think that's what they're up to. And if... The Europeans realize what's being done to them, and they must. Uh, then they're not going to be too happy about it. And what might happen is you might have a breakup, and a breakup would be good for us, in as much as they wouldn't be cooperating as much as they would have been otherwise. And uh, it could. Uh, give us the opportunity we've been looking for to show the people of the world, but particularly the United States, look, you know, don't you people get it? We tell you over and over and over again what's going on, and you don't get it. Well, you know, here it is right in your face. People who, who don't play the game. Um, I mean, look at uh, Smolensk in Russia last year. You know, I mean, the Polish... Um, the whole cabinet, most almost all of their, their people, I'm convinced it's because they didn't want to play with the European Union. They didn't want to devalue the dollar. They didn't want to play ball, and they were simply taken out. It, it's that simple. You can't convince me that that was pilot error. I, I mean, that, that whole that whole. Well, I agree with you. Ridiculous. 
I agree with you. They'll look if they have wars where 500 million people get killed. What do they care about a plane lo- load of people? Mm-hmm. I mean, these people are diabolical. They're evil, and that's what the public of the world, particularly Americans, just don't get. You're dealing with a Luciferian conspiracy. Right. These guys are nutcases. 